to the side. If this is working or if you just want to say hello, you can say hi in there so that we can know that this is working properly. Um, but whether it's working or not, I'll start explaining what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, so tonight I'm going to be weaving on a loom that I made out of plywood and nails. Um, I'm making myself a vest. And the other day I dyed a bunch of fabric and yarn and fluff in turmeric and indigo. Um, and also a little bit of synthetic dye to get some blues and yellows that I'm going to weave with tonight. Um, and then that's what I'm going to make my vest out of. So the loom is here in front of me, I guess. Oh, hi, a girl named Peter. I don't know. Who's that? Is that? Hi. Hi, Brian. <laughs> I guess it's working. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be weaving on this loom. And Mike is here with me. He's running tech. So, Mike, if you want to put on that special second camera, then people can see the loom up close. It'll show up in the in the corner, I believe, mm -hmm. in a moment. Oh, it's LP. Hi, LP. <laughs> there it is. So, as you can see, I have put nails in the shape of a pattern piece, and they're spaced out at half an inch spacing, and then I've warped the loom. And if you'd like to see me doing that, we've filmed uh, the behind the scenes like prep work of all of this stuff in another segment called Work Craft, and uh, the warping of the loom is already up on there. So um, I hope that you've all brought your own crafts to work on, Oh, there's my mom. Hi. Um, I hope you've all brought your own crafts to work on. If you have and you want to send us a picture of them, you can send them either to our email, highlyviolet at gmail.com, or you can post them on Instagram and tag us, or you can send them in a DM. Um, or I guess if you have Mike's phone number, you can text it, send it directly to him. But an email would be easier. My phone's in the other room, so I won't get it if you send it to me. Um, and if you want to weave along and you have questions about weaving, just ask them in the chat and I can um, do some demos. I have some other weaving looms to the side with me. Um, I guess I'll just show them. It's just like a basic stretcher canvas frame. And then this is a frame I made out of um, one by twos. But if you have like a picture frame or anything square or rectangle, um, you can totally use that. Or you can just do your own craft and have me to the side and it'll feel like we're crafting together. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start weaving. Oh, I should also address, uh, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but our neighbors just started playing like Goomps Goomps music, which they tend to do. <laughs> A little later than this usually um, but tonight they decided to start playing it like at 7 57 right before we started the stream so I don't know if that carries here or not um, I'm gonna keep we've set up a big screen over here so I'm gonna keep looking over there and looking at the chat if people have questions or anything to say I will address them um, and otherwise I'm just gonna start weaving um, so this is some it's like a wool blend that I dyed in turmeric the other day um, and then rolled up into a ball last night. We also filmed all of the dyeing of this fabric and yarn, and that'll also be in a work craft segment um, in a week or two. So I'm just giving myself a length of yarn and then I'm gonna work it into my loom. I wonder if people can hear the sound of the thread going, um, or of the weft going through the warp. It's 
kind of soothing. So part of why I chose to weave tonight is because weaving in, in general is really soothing. I mean, I, I personally think that crafting in general is soothing. Um, but weaving is like, it's been studied. It has calming, uh, it has a calming ability. It like, it works. <laughs> Something about it being really repetitive and slow and soft, I think. There's a lot of um, work done for people with disabilities and people that are like struggling in all sorts of different ways um, using weaving as a therapy. And I feel like with everything that we're dealing with right now, it's a nice thing to be doing to calm down the nervous system. So I wonder if any weavers are going to join us. Um, for any non-weavers, um, I'm using a long needle. It's my favorite needle. It's just like this plastic thing, but it's I love how long it is and how big the eye is. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to weave and on these plywood and nail looms, I like to use a needle, but when I'm working on a frame loom, I usually just use my fingers. There's also all sorts of tools for packing down the yarn. Um, but again, I just like to use my fingers. It's something about that. It's really nice just to like feel like, I don't know, uh, how do I explain that? It's slower than using a tool to pack down, but it like, I guess because I've been doing it for so long, it's kind of like when you're cooking and like instead of using a recipe, you just like feel it out. Um, I like that I can just feel how tightly I'm packing down the yarn. And um, the big thing with weaving is that everything is an over under pattern. So I go across and I pop under every other warp. And then on the way back, I hook under the opposite warp. So it's really like, it takes a minute to learn this process. But once you've got it, it's like pretty basic. Um, and then you can expand on it as much as you want, keeping it in form on the left and right. Um, keeping the selvages intact is kind of tricky and that takes some time and keeping like the tension correct is a little tricky, but the basic structure of weaving is really simple. So if anyone wants to weave along, um, I'd be happy to show how to do that. It's pretty easy to pick up. Is anyone out there working on a project right now? I'll, I'll wait for answers. I think there's a delay. Um, I don't know if, if um, my friend Amber has joined us yet, but I, I was talking to her earlier today, and I know that she was going to work on some paper flowers, um, and she sent me some pictures of some that she was working on already, and I think Mike can figure out how to put those on the screen so everyone can see them. Oh, and nice. It looks like... Um, some research is happening, writing some D&D &D stuff. Nice, that's creative. And, um, and some earrings are being made. It looks like some other pictures have been sent along. So we'll share those so that everyone can see. Um, you can feel like, feel like everyone's working together sort of that way. Oh. 
Mike's going to figure out how to share pictures. <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> We're learning as we go. We figured we'd do a simple weaving um, live stream tonight. Oh, there they are. So those are Amber's. Um, no, they're not up yet. Oh, they're not up. <laughs> I can see them, but I guess you can't all see them. Learning as we go. We decided to do this like simple weaving project because I can kind of do that without thinking as we figure out all the tech side of this live stream. Um, next week, we're going to do something that's a little more interactive. I'm already, I'm already trying to get everyone to come back next week before we were even like five minutes into this one. <laughs> so please do. It's nice to, it's nice to have you all here. There you go. There they are. So those are the um, the flowers that my friend Amber is working on tonight. Um, and I guess if you click into the next one, yeah, there's a close up. They're so beautiful. They're made from paper. She says they're really easy. I don't know. I think she's really talented. So if anyone else wants to send photos too, we'll share them. There's an earring photo apparently. Too. Amber's here, but she's uh, she wasn't figuring, can't figure out how to comment. So I'm oh, try. okay. Oh, there she is. She did it. Hi. Nice. <laughs> um, I don't know how well you can see. I guess you can probably see that top, the like detail photo. But I'm about I'm coming to the end of my yarn here. Um, I dyed it, like I just dipped three quarters of a skein in as opposed to dipping the whole thing. So it created this like, it did a rectangle on its own and then it kind of like fades into the white, which I really like. Um, I'm not, I don't have a plan for what I'm weaving here. So if anyone wants to like tell me what color to use next or if they want to see something, um, that would be fun. I'd be I'd be happy to hear some suggestions. Um, oh, she's been here the whole time. Nice. We're all learning the tech together. It's funny. I'm like not usually super tech person, but over the last couple of weeks, we've really been diving into it. I still don't know if I am a tech person. <laughs> But I'm enjoying it. It's fun. It's it's nice to feel like we can connect with people this way. Um, so I also dyed all this fabric, and I'm just I'm gonna cut some of it into strips as I go. I think I'm gonna make like a little pattern or something. Oh, maybe I'll make a placket. That'll be nice. Oh, that yellow is pretty. I love pretty. Um, yeah, that's the turmeric. So all the yellows, um, all the yellows are done with turmeric. This one that I'm using right now, I left in the bath for, um, I think like five to ten minutes, 
So it got really nice and saturated. What I left it in the bath while it was boiling. And then um, the wools, I didn't leave in for quite as long because I was scared they would um, felt if I left them in the hot water. Um, and then the, the other, these yarns are also turmeric. And then this fabric was turmeric but done with a bundle dye. So instead of dipping it in a dye bath, it was sprinkled on top and then rolled up and steamed. Um, and yeah, like I said, there'll be a uh, work craft segment on the dye coming up in a week and a half or so. Um, oh, a preview. Yeah, that's that's um, that's this fabric. Oh, well, you can't see it. There's, that's this fabric <laughs> going into the the dye bath that was all wrapped up. That was a good idea. Oh, and that's oh, and that's the bundle dyed fabric. Yeah, the the bundle dye was um, turmeric and like a superfood powder, a spirulina powder, and then and then yeah, and then the the wool going in as well. And all those shirts that were behind me were dyed with turmeric as well in that photo that you just saw. Um, turmeric is really fun to dye with because it doesn't really need a mordant. Um, mordant is something that fixes dye to fabric. And um, with a lot of both synthetic and natural dyes, it's important to include that so that it, so that it sticks and stays. Um, but... Like, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely splashed turmeric on myself enough times when cooking or even just like on my hands and it really stains. So it also does the same thing with fabric. It, it's not 100% um, light fast. So over time, as it's exposed to sunlight, it will fade. It takes like, it would have to be, you'd have to be like wearing it out in the sun regularly for like a year. Um, I'd say like every week out in the sun before it would start to fade. Oh, the sound's gone. Mike's pointing to the <laughs> Mike's pointing to the wall um, where the the neighbors are. I guess they they just they're done. It's good for now. We'll see. Oh boy. Oh, hi, Hardy. Thanks. Yeah, that was Mike's idea. The um, one camera is the webcam that we used last time, and the other camera is actually Mike's old cell phone that he just happened to still have um, and unearthed. And it doesn't work as a cell phone anymore, but it works as a webcam. So this little one is the is actually the webcam in the the wide one is the cell phone. Oh, thanks, Brian. I didn't iron this fabric before um, laying it out here. I like dyed it and washed it and then just put it here. So it's a little wrinkly. It's making cutting strips kind of difficult. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see that I'm struggling a little bit. It's real. Everything that's happening here is real. Oh, so there's a there's a question. Um, what am what am I making? I guess that's it. That's great. I know you're probably not the only one that showed up late, so I should probably reiterate that as I go. Um, so I'm making a vest for myself. I dyed a bunch of fabric and wool the other day, and then I warped a loom that I I actually already had this made out of plywood and nails. Um, and I warped it up the other day. There's a video 
on our YouTube um, work craft warping the loom, or you can see me doing that. And um, yeah, I'm weaving the, this will just be one half of the front piece of a vest. And probably over, I'll, I don't even know how far I'll get tonight, maybe halfway or something. And then I'll finish that over next week. Um, and so yeah, if you're coming in late, I did mention that this week I'm weaving and we're figuring out sort of all of our tech here. And then next week we're gonna do something that's a little more interactive. So it'll still be crafty. You can still your, bring your own crafts to your own table, but, um, but we'll be doing something a little more interactive. It's kind of holiday. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much to give away. It depends on, we'll see. I might say more later. Is that, uh, is that research? Mm -hmm. Is that Laura's research? Nice. Um, architecture, arch using the picture frame method. So I have, you big up. <laughs> I have, um, I brought two frame looms over with me um, so that I could show this very thing. So I'm just gonna use the little one. Um, this is just a canvas stretcher frame. You might have a picture frame or anything that is like rectangle or square will work. Um, you wanna use a pretty uh, sturdy yarn or twine or like even like a thin rope, anything that you have or string, anything that you have that is sturdy enough and holds up to this kind of tension. So um, I don't know if you can hear that. It's like bouncing. Uh, it's not, if I like really yanked it, I could probably break this, but I'm just, I'm putting enough force on it um, to know that it's not gonna break while I'm weaving. So I'm gonna take the end of my string and then tie it to the top left part. Do you wanna zoom in? Yeah. I'm just gonna tie it up here to the top of my loom, like a double knot. and then pull straight down, wrap around the back, land about a quarter of an inch away from where you tied on, and pull straight down again. That's actually more like half. Anywhere from a quarter to a half inch is fine. And then pull straight down again, and wrap around, and this whole time you're gonna hold tension You're gonna hold the tension up at the top with your thumb. And then cut um, just enough room so that you can tie a knot. It's a little tricky. It's like tying a knot on a package. You're gonna tie, hmm, how's it this way to show this? Okay, so. You're gonna tie the knot to that last string in the back. So basically like just tying it onto the frame at the top. You tie a double knot. And like I said, it's a little tricky. And then your warp's on. And um, I usually just weave on the top warps the back warps are just for stability, so you don't have to touch those. And if it helps, um, I don't have a piece of paper, but if you have a piece of paper, you can put it in between the warps so that you don't have to look at those back warps. And then you just weave on the front part, and at the end, you snip the back and make knots at the top and bottom. Um, but I can go over that part later. Um, let me know in the comments if that was clear or if you need any more instruction on that. Um, and then I'll, 
Also, when you're once you have it warped and you're ready to actually weave on it, I can show that as well. Your mom's pictures. You found them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, let's see the earrings. Nice. Yeah, my mom's been really into um, beading lately. Probably like the last, I don't know. I mean, I guess if she's still here, she can tell us how long it's been. <laughs> I think it's been a few years that she's been making these beaded necklaces and earrings and bracelets and stuff. Oh, and she painted a little bunny. Cute. I like it. Nice. Thanks for sending them. <laughs> that bunny is awesome. Agreed. My mom's a really good painter. Um, that seems like a new... <laughs> well, she does like... She kind of does it all. I actually think... When I think of the stuff that my mom paints, I think of mostly like flowers and also cute little creatures. Like all over my parents' house, like all the, like a bunch of, she like collects old furniture and a lot of the furniture has like cute, like little, like, like one thing has like a little butler man on it and like a chair that has a pineapple on it and like all just like um like nice like illustrated watercolor and um oh she's an okay <laughs> all the answers are in the comments yeah lots of jewelry happening I think she's trying to offload it if anyone wants some jewelry out well the fabric gives like a nice thick texture to the weaving which is why I'm using it for the front placket of the vest and then the yarn is kind of like a little softer um, or at least the way I'm weaving it right now that's how it's working out Hi, Sophie. Sophie, if you just got here, um, or anyone else that also just maybe got here, I'll, uh, I'll, sh I'll share again what, what's going on. Um, I am weaving a vest for myself with fabric and yarn that I dyed the other day on a loom that's made out of plywood and nails. Um, it's a fully salvaged loom, so it's similar to the looms that I used with Friends of Light when I worked, um, when I had that company. Um, 
and I'm giving little weaving demos if anyone wants them. And I've asked people to share photos of things that they're working on to either our email, highlyviolet at gmail.com, or um, to put them on Instagram or send them in a DM so that um, Mike, who's running tech, can also share them on the stream so everyone can see them. And if also if you're working on something and like want to, then you've already shared it and you want to show the progression, we'd be happy to see. Obviously, you're all seeing my progression already. I'm figuring this out as I go, so I'm not sure what to grab next. I brought this roving cue to work with, um, sick fluff unspun maybe I should spin it as I go whatever I didn't bring a I didn't bring my spindle in here so maybe I can spin it by hand a little oh yeah I think um I like that there's I like that people are talking amongst themselves in the chat <laughs> um I do think that Amber has met definitely Sophie um Maybe LP. And I think Amber, oh, Amber and Tim met too. Yeah, because Tim and Sophie were both at my parents' house for my 25th birthday. It was a while ago, though. And also um, another birthday, like a couple years ago, I don't remember when it was, we went to a brewery and... All three of you were there. So I'm putting this uh, this roving in here. I love using roving because it creates like a cloud-like texture. That I think is really nice. Oh, I didn't think this through. Um, since this is a wearable item, I don't really want to leave spaces. So I'd like to connect the, the warps where this placket is. But um, roving isn't really great for doing that with. So I guess I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit here. I'm going to leave a space of just a few warps so I can connect with something else. So any of you that have been to our home might have noticed that we have changed this room. You can kind of see like the, I'm in the blue room, but the blue room is no longer blue. The blue room is now the gold room 2.0. We, um, we spent the other night, I don't even know how long ago it was now. Was it like yesterday or was it like a week ago? <laughs> 
I don't know. We spent one night recently um, hanging a bunch of curtains in here, gold velvet curtains, so that we can use this room as a podcast room. Um, we were originally going to be doing our podcast at U2 Ken Wu, which is in Williamsburg, and we're hoping to still do some podcasting there too when it's safe to be out in the world again. Um, but for now, we figured we, we should have a space to be able to record and try everything out, test out all, all of our stuff. Um, so to make this room soundproof, we hung some curtains. I think Mike wants to show some photos that we took. We did like a fun 360 photo shoot in here. Um, there it is. We have this um, 360. Does it look like it worked again? Sorry, we had some Wi-Fi problems. Our stream disconnected. I hope we're back on. It's kind of unclear to me. Um, if it's working, I think it's working again. I hope it's working again. Sorry about that. Mike was in the middle of sharing photos from our gold room. We overloaded it. Chat is not keeping up, but it is going. Oh, can you see it on another thing? Yeah. So we have the. It's not updating. As I said, we're figuring out our all our stuff with this one. We're trying to. It might take a few, a few streams to really get it down. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. OK, so the fuzzy white thread, it's a roving. Yeah, we're back. OK, good, we're back. <laughs> yeah, I think the photo was, I think the photo like took us off the, the internet, but I'm glad we're back. I don't know how many I don't know how many things I missed. If I missed something, if anyone asked a question or something and I missed it, just ask it again. <laughs> I hope you're all having a nice time. I'm having a nice time, even with our disconnection issues. Um, if you are having a nice time and you would like to have a nice time again, you could push the little subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. We're actually trying to, um, we would love to get to 100 subscribers because apparently you can't change the name of the channel, like the URL um, bit. We wanted to say youtube.com slash Hailey Varlet, and right now it says youtube.com slash like a bunch of numbers and letters and you know, stupid. So <laughs> I don't know if you haven't subscribed and you want to, we would appreciate it. Um, we'll also be doing, we'll be doing more of these videos. Uh, I mentioned, I don't know if everyone was here for it, but I mentioned that next week I'll be doing a more interactive craft video. Um, it's going to be kind of like holiday themed, there's going to be some like moving pieces. I'll like send out some teasers this week. I think it'll be fun to watch. It's going to be kind of like trippy.
Nice. It's better than the movie that they're going to watch. I'm glad to hear it. I mean, I don't know. Depends on what movie. You could probably do both. Oh, Amber's ready for the next step. Okay, so um, let me get let me put something down here. I'm gonna put. Do you want to go into the, the the detailed one? That's maybe too busy. I do actually have a piece of paper I'm going to grab to put in between the layers. So it really helps to put a piece of paper in between the layers of warp, because otherwise your eyes get kind of twisted. Um, so if you happen to have a needle, like the one I was using, or even like a smaller, any needle that has like a blunt tip and a um, big eye, if you happen to have that, you could use that. But if not, I'm gonna show you how to do it with just your fingers if you don't. Um, so you're gonna take, let's see, I'm gonna reorient myself a little bit. You're gonna take a length of yarn, kind of like however long you can handle, um, and then fold over so that you're not gonna fray the yarn, just fold a little loop for yourself to hold on to. And that's what you're gonna weave with. So you're gonna go over the first yarn, under the second, over, under, over, under, and so on, go over, under, all the way across. Over, under, over, under, over, under. Pull it through, leave a few inches at the end, just leave that there. Pack it down so that it's not quite to the bottom of your frame, but kind of in a nice straight line. And then you're gonna turn and go back the other direction, but this time you're gonna alternate. So. Um, you're going to go under every warp that you previously went over and over every warp that you previously went under. And you're going to go all the way across, just like that. I think you can see that pretty well. Yeah. And then you'll pull it through. But with the warp, the vertical yarns that you put on, those are really tense and like stay really tight. But with this, what you're weaving in is called the weft. And the weft is really soft. The weft like hugs the warp. You don't wanna pull it tight at all. You wanna like gently pull it through. You can kind of see it's like going up and down. There's some texture to it. It's not loose, like it's not hanging off the side, but it's, Definitely not tight. If you pull it tight, then your whole weaving will kind of shrink in, um, which if that happens, that's fine. Nothing's gonna, nothing bad is gonna happen. Um, but you kind of, it's easiest if it's a little bit looser. So um, I just went ahead and now I'm going back the other way and again, alternating my under over pattern from the time before, pulling it gently through, tapping it down just so it rests on top, and then going back the other way. And it's this is the process. This is the whole the whole weaving process is under over under over, and then alternating when you go back. Um, and then if you want to change color. There's a couple ways to do it. I think because we're not. Um, you're not learning this in person with me. I'll just show you like an easy way. You can leave the yarn hanging out the side and then start your new color from the opposite side. So if you cut
cut a length. And then make sure you're alternating. So on my, I will, I'm going to leave my yarn over here. I'm going to start over here. I think you can see that the yarn is under there. So I would be starting over, under, over, under, over, under, and so on. And do you would just start it the same way that you started the other one, leaving a bit on the end, and then you can turn. And so this is how you do stripes. Um, in the future, I can show you how to do something beyond stripes, but I think that's a good thing to get started with. So um, let me know if that was clear and if you have any other questions, and I can show you, um, I can show you more tips. Um, what am I? This is like a huge trip. Oh, that's nice. That's like that's like a really nice compliment. The infomercial thing. I uh, it's like a dream <laughs> to host infomercials. Oh yeah. I don't know. If you want, you call now. You can not only get one weaving video, but you can get two for the price of one. We'll cut the price in half just for you, just right now. It's a one-time offer. I'll practice. By, ne by next week, I'll have some. I'll have some stuff for sale. I'll have like a chopomatic or a weave a weave a drone or a yarn. Doesn't everybody need a yarn detangler? Oh man, when you leave your yarns up top in the cabinet and they all come crashing down on you and all your yarn gets tangled all over the place, isn't that just the pits? Everybody needs a yarn detangler. It's only 99.99.99.99. Oh, I sold something. <laughs> Wonderful. Ooh. Oh, did you do that? <laughs> I'm like, who's John? <laughs> I I hope everyone can see that little zombie. You think they can? I think Brian's gonna like the little zombie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, my mom's gonna throw in earrings with the yarn detangler. Only three easy payments of 33, 33, 33. 33. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's so fun and relaxing. It's like the perfect thing to be. Oh, Brian did like the zombie. choosing to type instead of speak. <laughs> I guess I'm new to this. I've only, I don't know why I've just been going with the yellow. So I like the yellow. I wonder if they can hear me gulping. I'm drinking some tea that Mike made. Iced tea. I have like a strangely loud gulp when I drink in general, so I bet they could hear it. They meaning you, all of you watching. <laughs> I was talking to Mike. <laughs> Forgot I was supposed to be talking to the people that aren't, that are here virtually.
चांस दी जान दी um so i'm joining the can you see oh yeah you can see it i'm joining the two stripes that i made here with a a join called um overlapping where i'm loosening up the the yarn and i'm that's the other one i'm loosening up the yarn and i'm scooting in between Um, we could probably add an on-screen telephone number. Have to make do some like graphic work. We'll work on it when we come when we have a a real formal infomercial session. We'll definitely have an on-screen telephone number. I mean, I like the ideas. I I'm like I'm looking at Mike when I say we have to look at making some graphics. I'm actually the graphics person. Turns out Mike is the tech guy, but I make all the graphics. So that would probably be be my job. I'll work on it. I like these ideas. Did you? Oh, oh, you did that. <laughs> oh, that was fair. Yeah, nice. Um, a question: What part of the vest is this? I like the mixing of colors. Thank you. Um, this is the front part. Oh, you want me to hold it up? So, like. 
this is going to be here. Yeah, this is the shoulder, this is the neck, and then this is the front um, where it'll connect. I don't know how I'm going to connect it, maybe buttons or something, but that's what it is. I'm weaving it in the shape of the pattern piece that would be there. Oh, yeah, it looks like it could be the back. Um, I'm actually going to make the back like like a lower, maybe like a V kind of thing. Um, and then the, the strap part will be, well, I haven't really decided what the back's going to be like yet. It's going to be a little smaller in the back. It's going to come like right up to the top in the front and then be like a scoop in the back. Um, other than that, I don't know the exact details. Hmm, I'm running out of blue. I don't know what's next. Um, how long does it take to complete? It take I don't know. <laughs> the true answer is I don't know yet, but um, when I make these, this jacket that I make with um, Friends of Light, that takes 160 hours to weave, but that like that includes the setup of the board, the warping, and then we were weaving it in a very particular way. I'm kind of taking a couple shortcuts by using, or not really shortcuts, I'm just doing it slightly differently. Um, but using the fabric strips, it speeds it up a lot. Um, this is also a vest and not a jacket. This is going to be like a really short vest. So the jackets were an, an additional like eight inches long and then also had sleeves. Um, it took me about an hour to like make the board and warp the board. And then I'm guessing what it's been an hour so far and I'm here. So I guess it'll take me like four hours total to weave this this piece. So then another four hours for the other half. Um, the back will be a little smaller, so maybe two or three for each side. So that's like 15 hours in total. That's not, that's pretty fast. That seems pretty fast. I guess I'll go back to like, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'll time it. But probably between like 15 and 20 hours for the weaving of the entire deck, of the entire vest. <laughs> I'm not great at estimating time. This is just something I've learned about myself. Um, I think I said it would be four for the two fronts, but it now it's like four for the one front. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess I should have my cup not next to the microphone, huh? I'm gonna use this one.
truth would have come out at some point. Yeah, I can show how to start and end a new color. So um, let's go back to the to the yeah. I could get more in depth with it maybe another time, but this is like a good way to start. So you can just leave it hanging off the edge. And just and just leave it there and then pick up your new color I'm actually gonna grab some of this blue pick up your new color and you can bring that in from the other edge so you start you ended here so you're gonna start on the other side and just make sure that you're following your over under pattern so on the end here my um, previous yarn is under, so I'm going to start over, and then I'll just weave right across. And when you get to the other end, pull it through, just make sure you leave a couple inches on the edge, and then you can just keep weaving. And when you're done, you can leave those ends in um i'll let you i'll let you go ahead and do your colors and then i can show you the weaving of the ends um maybe either later or in another video um or like you know anyone that knows me personally you can you can give me a call <laughs> i'll walk you through it um But yeah, once you have a few in too, let me know and I can I can show you how to how to weave in those ends just so that you have the knowledge. Let me know if that was if that worked. <laughs> oh, you got it. So if you missed it earlier, we are selling a yarn detangler only $99.99, $99.99. If you call right now, 1-800-YARN-BOY. That's 1-800-YARN-BOY. If you call right now, yarn detangler for only $99.99, $99.99. If you call in the next five minutes, I'll even throw in a free pair of earrings. <laughs> um did I make the top I'm wearing now no I didn't actually thanks for asking though um I went up to Boston um to a a place called the third piece which is a a yarn store in Boston they had me come up there like I don't know a year ago or a year and a half ago or so 
um, to teach a couple classes. And one of the people that worked there, um, I let her take all my classes for free, and she made me this top in exchange. In, I was there for like a weekend, and she started it the first night I was there. And by I was there for like Friday through Sunday, and by Sunday she presented me with this top. Um, and yeah, it's cozy. Um, are you guys crafting? So, oh, oh, what was that? Ooh, mystery. Um, Brian and Sophie, I think, and Hardy, if he's still here, um, are you guys crafting? Are you guys making anything right now? I think I know, I think everyone else that has at least been chatting, I think you've told me. Oh, you're crafting an Animal Crossing dice. I mean, if you want to send us a photo of that, I would love to see what you're... <laughs> Save me a bright vest. I am excited about that. Okay, so, so, so Sophie's working on a drawing from Still Life Cloud. Nice. I'd still like to, I mean, if you want to share it, you can send a picture. You don't, yeah, and you don't have to be quiet. Um, Brian, is this? Oh, no, I mean, the your Animal Crossing is creative, too. You can, if you want to use the stream as a motivation to make things physically, next week or the next week or any other week we do this. Um, that's great, but you know, no pressure. And then, oh, Hardy's adding English subtitles to 80s Chinese dramas. That's cool. Is that, I mean, I guess that's like also creative. That's kind of like craft, your crafting language. Um, my mom made two more earrings. That's great. Oh yeah. Send, so send your, oh, Mike already answered, but yeah, send your photo to, um, our email, highlyviolet at gmail.com, or you can send it in the, through Instagram. Mike is checking both of those platforms.
<laughs> you're really you're doing great with the graphics here, Mike. I like where this is going. This is craft craft work has become so much more. Oh, Kelly's here, finally. <laughs> you made it. Um, I guess, you, yeah, if you just got here, I'm working on um, weaving a, a vest for myself with some yarn and fabric that we dyed the other day. I dyed it in turmeric and indigo. Um, and... Um, people have been sending in things that they're working on. If you want to send in a photo to highlyviolet at gmail.com, we'll post it on the stream. Um, Mike has also been uh, turning this into a, a sales, a sales, a sales room, <laughs> an infomercial. I don't know why I forgot the name for a second. Um, that's, that's what those graphics are. I'm so excited to see what everyone's doing. Oh, Kelly's been here the whole time. Nice. It's like an HGTV infomercial. Yeah, totally. Oh, more earrings. Nice. Wow. Just in this, they're come together so quickly. Amber's asking if we can play a, the theme song we made. I don't know if we made a theme song. I want to hear about it too. <laughs> I want to make a theme song now. I'm trying to think like, what did I, t what did I say? What did I say we did? <laughs> oh yeah oh no that was um what was the the name of that mike found that online that's such a cool song um oh he's yeah he's explaining it in the in the comments do you have the tech skills to play them the song i don't know if it'll like i mean we could try i don't know if it'll like play nicely, um, like I don't know if it would go through straight from the computer or if it would play through the computer speakers into this microphone, but we can try. Oh, no, he's gonna send the link and then you can play it yourselves. <laughs> yeah, but what did you, you found that you like searched, what did you search? To find that. I know. <laughs> He's just typing. He won't speak. <laughs> there it is. 
is. Oh, you thought he sang it? Yeah, I could see that. He is not the talk show boy, though. My fingers are getting tired. My I use my hands a lot, and my my fingers get like um, just tight. I do a lot of this exercise. Um, I did not spin my yarn. I dyed it though, and I um. You might be surprised by this, but I've only dyed yarn a handful of times. This was like the second or third time I dyed yarn, um, and it came out well. I think the the first time I did it was years ago, and I like was boiling the water and like moving it around a lot, and it just like felt it up. Like obviously, it felt it up. Um, I did it wrong, and then, <laughs> now I know a lot more about dyeing, and I also know a lot more about fibers, so these came out really well, and I think I'm going to do it a lot more often, um, but no, I didn't spin it. This, um, the really, like, loosely spun, it's still kind of, ro it's, it's, like, just barely spun. It's not quite roving anymore, and it does actually have a cord in the center um, that it's been spun around. This comes from... I went to Ireland a few years ago with my parents and a place that we stayed, um, the woman that owned the house had sheep and, and spun some yarn and also had just sheared some of the sheep. So she gave me this and she also gave me the roving that I have next to me. Um, I don't even know if I can call this roving actually, like this part is, but this isn't, it's not in tube form. It's really just like the fluff from the sheep. Um, and then I dyed it in turmeric and in indigo. Um, and I might try to spin it. I'm not, I have a drop spindle, but I'm not um, very proficient on it. I, I took like one spinning class a few years ago and I, I played around with it, but I don't know. I bet I could, I bet I could figure it out if I gave it more time, but I'm not quite there with it yet. Um, thanks. Yeah, I'm happy with the blue, too. You, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll try the drop spindle. I don't know. Do you spin, Kelly, or anyone else on here? Um, maybe someone can send me some tips on spinning, some videos I can watch while I'm home a little more often. I was thinking it might be nice to learn how to use the drop spindle while we're walking. It seems like something, I mean, I think I'd have to practice a lot not walking, but you know, there's like those, there's like people that have been doing it their whole lives and have it passed down through generations, especially like I've seen a lot of photos of people in Peru that can like walk around spinning on the drop spindle. Um, I feel like would be a nice activity. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Kel Kelly says that she spins a little bit. You're now crafting some steak taco tacos now. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, I'll have to get tips from you, Kelly, when 
next time I see you on the on spinning. Or maybe I'll figure it out by that point. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I like all these like graphics that are popping up. Should figure out how to get them to like flash and I guess I already already uh, suggested that do like rolling. Oh, that I mean, that works. <laughs> There must be a way to make it do it automatically, though, too. But that's great, Mike. That looks good. <laughs> totally works. Like, usually it, you would think, how deep are you going to go into all this stuff? But, like, t now's the time to go deep, right? Figure it all out. Learn all the, learn it all. Make all the graphics. You can do everything we're talking to do. Oh wow, that's nice. Is that a Sophie? That's so pretty. I really like the um, the flowers in the top right, like the little. I don't know. Are they daffodils? Thanks for sharing it. Oh, Kelly's asking how long it'll take to do this panel approximately. Um, so it's been, oh, it's been like an hour and a half, although I've been doing a couple other things as well. Um, I've gotten this far, so like, yeah, probably about four hours to weave this panel. It depends on how many, like, if I do more fabric than yarn, then it'll build up quicker just because it's thicker. If I do more yarn, um, it'll take a little longer. If I use some of the roving, it then it'll build up a little bit quicker too. Um, yeah, it kind of just depends on how quickly or how much thick stuff I use. And then also how much patterning I do. I didn't really anticipate doing any patterning, but then when I sat down here, I decided I wanted a placket in the front. So um, I started that and then I worked with some roving and realized I couldn't connect them. So it like, Things got a little out of out of hand down here. I think I'll I'll try and build it up a little bit quicker. <laughs> I could also like batch task and cut these strips ahead of time, but I kind of wanted to do that on the stream um, just so that people could see how I cut the strips or just see that they are being cut. Also, the sound of the scissors might be cool. Or it might be annoying. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out later. You're all finding out now.
Is that a is that a hardy subtitle? Wait, what did it say? Night's slow flow of ticking time. Wow. What um what movie is that for? Thank you for sending that. Um, the 1987 TV adaption of Dream of the Red Chamber, an 18th century novel. Do you, are you like watching the movie and then doing subtitles while watching the movie or is it all frames like that? Um, also, oh yeah, you like, I'm, I am using nice crisp scissors, it's true. <laughs> They're my fabric scissors. Um... Kelly asked if I twist the strips when I weave them. I kind of do. Um, I guess you can see in the close-up, um, like this is a linen, so it's a little thicker, but I kind of like squish them down so they twist on their own. So I don't really, I don't really twist them like ahead of time. I just, but I don't stop them from twisting. I do like the texture that it creates when they twist onto themselves. Oh my God, it's 35 hours long. The movie is 35 hours long? Oh, because it's a, oh, maybe it's like a, oh, it's a TV series. Okay, I understand. <laughs> wow. Amber says her scissors are not, are old and not nearly as satisfying. I'm sorry to hear that. It's because they're heavy too. I think that's part of why they sound so crisp. Is that a Kelly? Nice. I like that green, the bright green that pops up in there. That's nice. How far along are you? It looks pretty, it looks like you're getting there. Is it gonna be a scarf? I like that I ask these questions and then I have to wait like 30 seconds to a minute <laughs> for it to catch up. I love seeing what everyone's working on. This is so fun. Um, Kelly asked if I get concerned that once the vest is done, it'll cause shrinkage irregularly. I actually don't block it. No. Um, I, so the, the only real testing I've done is with the jackets that we were making. Um, and 
I think because it's like it's woven. Well, I think because it's woven as opposed to being knit, it does keep its shape. Um, yeah, I've it's I don't know. I've considered blocking it. I've blocked other woven things in the past and it works fine. I think I guess I don't have a good answer for it. I think ultimately like I just won't really wash it. <laughs> and then it should keep its shape. Like I'll I'll like air air it out and like maybe do a little hand washing if I need to, spot clean for sure. Um but nothing that would agitate it too much and then it should keep its shape. It's also packed down so tight that everything kind of stays in place. Um, and as long as I weave it with like just the right amount of tension, it, it does tend to hold its shape. So we'll, we'll see, I hope so. Um, oh, and the scarf is almost, nice. You're almost there. Yeah, I well, so I think this is definitely like, so Kelly's saying mixing textiles could give some issues, and it's true. Um, I'm very much like loosey-goosey about all sort of textile stuff. I, I like to know the rules and then break them. Um, and I think since I've been working with like, there's linen, there's silk, there's wool, there's like a wool blend yarn. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've worked with this stuff for long enough that I'm okay with breaking the rules a little bit. And, um, and also like aware that if I wear this for a year regularly, it might get a little wonky. Um, since it's just for me, I'm not too worried about it. And it's kind of nice. I can like, if anyone ever would want something like this, I'm making it now and I can test it and see which issues arise. Um, I like, yeah, I really like, like breaking the rules when it comes to, I hate breaking the rules like normally, like in life, but I love breaking the rules in textiles <laughs> in my craft world. If you're not washing it for breeze. Yeah, and we're just like airing it out. If it needs to be washed, I would I would wash it. Um, I just wouldn't like agitate it. It's just a vest, so it'll probably be on like over top of something. It won't be touching my skin directly. Um, speaking of mixing textiles, there's something, there's a lot of like, oh man, I don't know, I should have done some, I should have notes on this because I can't remember all the details, but in a lot of like religious text, they, they say not to mix textiles. Like, I can't think of the exact examples right now, but, um, I know I was just reading like an old, um, sketch or looking through an old sketchbook of mine they came across like a sister Coretta assignment and there were some notes on not mixing fibers and how that's like a, a sin um and I think like in some some culture like some um sect of Judaism there's like like you can't mix linen and wool um but then like on the flip side Lindsay Woolsey's are popular which is a mix of linen and wool um so it just would I guess that that particular group of people probably wouldn't use it but like plenty of other people use it but I like I like how like textile things like that crop up in, in different places.
Um, I guess it's 9.45. We'll, we'll do this for another 15 minutes. We're going to make this a two-hour stream exactly. Um, so if anyone wants to... If anyone wants to send any more photos or um, ask any questions or like quick subscribe while you're still here, that would be great. We'd appreciate it. We love it. Um, yeah, and otherwise I'm just going to weave for another 15 minutes and then uh, we're going to go away. <laughs> uh this is what Mike's creating, <laughs> sharing a photo. Order today and get the Ronco Fresh Pasta Maker. I can't read that bottom part. Just pay separate shipping and handling. Don't wait, call now, call now, call now, call now. 1-800-YARN-BOY. Just call 1-800-YARN-BOY now. We're throwing in a free Ronco Fresh Pasta Maker with the yarn detangler, just what everyone needs. You could make yarn out of your pasta. You could tangle it up and then you could detangle it. 99, 99.99.99, just three easy payments of 99.99.99.99. How much does this cost anyway? I had no idea I was going to be asked to sell things tonight. Oh, if I want to add a pocket to the front, how do you add? Um, so you could sew it on, or I've actually woven, like you can do kind of, it's not quite a double weave, but you can like kind of create your own um, second weaving. Well, I guess it is a double weave. Um, so if you had like a piece of cardboard, you could put that here. This would be where a pocket would be. <laughs> And then, I don't even remember how does this work. So then I would put nails um, along the top here and also along the bottom. And then I'd weave, I'd, I'd warp those nails. So there's like a second warp over, this is after this whole thing is woven, um, by the way. So, so I would be putting additional nails here and like scooting them in between where the warps are, making sure that I'm not breaking any of my threads. And then I'd weave the warps that the new ones. And as I go, I'd be hooking in and making connections, just sort of like this connection here, actually. Um, oh, you can't see that. Just sort of like this connection into that bottom row of, of woven vest. Um, and then and then I leave the top part open and then later go in and just sew that bottom part closed. But you could sort of like weave it and sew it. Okay, Kelly says she gets it. Good. <laughs> it's hard to, de to describe these things without actually doing them, but I'm glad, I'm glad that you get it. Um, yeah, that's a cool, that, 
we did that on some of the jackets and it took a while to like figure out how to do it. But then once we got it, we got it. It works, it works really well. Ooh, <laughs> steak tacos, nice, yum. I like that plate too. I wonder if we could buy the number 1-800 drawing board. It's probably taken. Are you going to call it? I mean... <laughs> I think Mike might be calling 1-800-YARN boy. <laughs> or at least looking it up. I don't know what he's doing. He's not speaking. You could type, you could tell me in the chat if you want. <laughs> Kelly's asking, how do you join the front and back panels? So um, it's the same connection that I make the, the join for like where different colors come together vertically. Um, with that I showed earlier, like the same way that you would connect the pocket. Yeah, there it is. Um, so that, that like overlapping stitch. Um, so you do that with the two sides. So I, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I could do it while, like I could leave one on the board and take the other one off and put it right next to it. So it's still under tension and join them that way. Or I could I could do that while they're off the board. They don't really need to be under tension. So it's kind of like sewing them together with a baseball stitch, but it's also a weaving technique. So you can kind of, I don't know, I call it weaving them together, but you could sort of refer to it either way. Um, and I'll usually do that with like a thicker, like a piece of silk or like a really nice, strong yarn. I definitely wouldn't do that with anything that might break. What is it? Mike just called Yarn Boy and a thank you for calling something. What was it? Oh, he's writing it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Penny talk? Wait, is that Yarn Boy? What? What's going on? That's not... Mike. <laughs> Why is that seal kissing that grandma? I don't understand. What? 
is that the old the the grandpa is like that's his emoji with the does anyone understand this please answer in the chat <laughs> i don't know i love it but i don't get it is penny yeah i don't know <laughs> We're going to have to do a deep dive. Cancel everything. Penny talk. Why is it yarn boy for penny talk? <laughs> How did they get yarn boy? Maybe we could team up. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Definitely was confusing. Okay, we're uh, we're coming to the end of this stream. It's nine fifty six. Uh, we'll be here for another four minutes. I thank you all for joining. This has been very fun for me. I hope it's been fun for you. This very first live stream episode. Should we call it an episode? What am I gonna call it? That's what I'm gonna call it. This very first live stream episode of craft work. Um we've posted one video of work craft, which is a behind the scenes studio side of craft work so it's the prep work that went into what I'm working on today um we'll be posting another uh video of work craft in the next couple of weeks to show the dyeing that I did and um and we'll be back next week with a special interactive craft um that I'll be teasing about during the week I'll probably just like tell you what it is at some point because <laughs> I can won't be able to control myself. I want you to know because I want you to join because I think it'll be really fun. Um, I'm glad you guys had a nice time. Thank you for joining. And yeah, we'll be back next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m. And, um, and I think the stream will be up like permanently, right? It'll be, he's nodding his head, yes. Um, so you can watch it, you can watch it in the future. Um, <laughs> my mom especially loved the seal. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. Thank you all for coming. We're going to stop like exactly at 10. So I don't have anything else to say, but we have two more minutes. I'm just going to keep leaving. <laughs> I probably will finish this, this one piece I'm working on. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, uh, call 1-800-YARN-BOY today to seal the deal. Uh, everything must roll. Like 30 seconds left to call. <laughs> Yes, I will. I will be showing pictures as this evolved, evolves as requested. It's a great idea. I think we're almost there. It's time to time to sign off. Um, thank you all for joining. This was really fun. I hope you all had a good time too. And uh, I'll see you virtually soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> End the stream. <laughs>